Welcome friend. In this video we will be painting this van with a water based base coat and a 2k clear coat lacquer. I'll be doing this in the flowering elbow workshop which temporarily got converted to a spray booth. I'm really pleased with the results of this project and I'll show you step by step what I did including the mistakes I made. So what I'm doing now is using some of this panel wipe down degreaser to get rid of any spots of tar or grease on the bodywork before I do the orbital sanding. So for this exciting job I'm using a standard panel wipe that's a wax and grease removing solvent and if it's any help I'll try and leave uh, links to all the materials I use down in the description below. It doesn't have to be a super thorough job because we're hitting it with the random orbit but getting the tar off first really helps save the sanding sheets and stops them getting clogged up which in turn hopefully prevents the sticky stuff from being spread all over the bodywork. Now our van's had an interesting and varied history and it's been resprayed in its lifetime after a serious accident this was before we owned it. The respray job didn't include the roof and so we don't need to respray that but the rest of it it either had very little lacquer on it or some kind of very cheap non-UV resistant lacquer. But either way you can tell as we sanded it just came straight to blue so the clear coats all worn off which is why it looks so patchy in places as the UV has discoloured the base coat. In contrast the sanding dust on the sliding door is white which indicates we're sanding clear coat rather than just base coat. So we've got some interesting bits of filler that we found here, here, all along here. Uh, I don't know. Let's plough on regardless and think about creating a place we can actually do this. The problem with doing it outside is that you're then at the whim of the weather, the birds, the insects, all that kind of thing. Even dust can be a problem outside, we think of it as clean, but there's actually, especially if it's windy, quite a bit of dust in the air. As you've no doubt deduced, I'm going to try and spray boothify the workshop here. I've tried to design things as I've been building up the workshop bit by bit to be as flexible and mobile as possible so most of the machines do have wheels on and I can move them across. The workshop itself is approximately equivalent to a two bay garage size type thing even though it's very unconventional and has straw bay walls and all the rest of it. We're going to want to create a through flow of air that's filtered so that it's not dusty. More on that later. For now we're using some cardboard to protect the floor so hopefully it doesn't turn completely blue. Cleanliness is super important so anything you bring in has to be cleaned well and it's worth checking your shop vac is filtering to a fine enough level. So I've wiped the area down, now I'm just going to shake this up and give it a coat of primer just to sort of seal that area and smooth it down. The original wing panel on the van had such serious rust that the repairs I did meant it was mainly fiberglass by the end. This new panel from eBay was cheap enough and it came primed and ready to paint. It picked up two scratches somewhere along the line though and I wanted to sort those out before starting. We can basically treat this and the bonnet you can see there as test panels for the whole process. Turn to the spray booth issue briefly, air is being blown out through that big door and it comes in through this one. We want to filter the incoming air. Very clean sheet. With both doors open the workshop becomes something of a wind tunnel. We often use that to our advantage with super dusty fumey jobs. I'm ready for all that good. It probably shouldn't have been that this was all a little bit of an afterthought, um, the, the filling of the gun itself, so I've just made this mount here, there's a funnel with a, an old tea bag, well, a new tea bag removed of the tea, just to be a strainer filter thing there, and then we've got the gun here held, and that's just elastic banded in this kind of weird way, and then it pops out of this little gap thing here. Right, this is very exciting. I've spent a long time prepping for this. We've got our gun set up ready. We've got compressed air pipe in that should be conditioned and oil free. We've got our paints ready to mix. We've got the fans blowing the air through. We've got nice cleanliness. We've got our masking down. 
There was something else, but I can't remember. Enough chit chat, let's give it a try. This bit of wing actually seemed to have dried quite nicely. As this is just something of a test piece, I wasn't sure if I was going to put this in the video, so I haven't got footage of the actual spray of this. But here I am using the tack cloth. This is after the first coat. Oh. <laughs> okay, there. I made two blunders on this same panel. There's one there, and you can just about see another one at the front of that wing. The bonnet went okay, the underside of the bonnet and I'm just waiting for that to flash off and then I'm just spraying on a second coat and kind of crossing my fingers and hoping that's going to cover up that little blemish. What you saw happening there was me holding the gun at too steep an angle and the paint just sort of ran out and wouldn't travel through which is why I had to spray it on that little scrap down the bottom. As far as I can tell it's quite unusual for DIYers to use water-based paint for the base coat. I really wanted to because it's so much better environmentally. It has some other unique features as well and here's one. So it looks mega orange peely at this stage. And the first coat that just sort of fell away so I'm hoping the same will happen. As a novice to this whole process when it went on fresh it was worrying to see how it looked but when it dries it just looks really good. I've heard accounts from a few other people saying just the same thing so I think that's probably quite universal for water-based paint. To recap so far then, although I screwed up the wing by tack clothing too soon I was actually quite encouraged by how the underside of the bonnet went, so here I am preparing some more paint. I'm just mixing in a touch of water to dilute it, which is a cool thing about water-based paints. This gives it a consistency that will just about go through the tea bag strainer thing I'm using and seems to go through the gun well. Now if A you've got experience with water-based paints and B you're a professional spray painter and C you haven't destroyed your computer in frustration yet you could leave us a comment below saying what I should be doing to mix up these paints well and I'm sure that would be useful for our DIY watchers here as well. Okay let's move on to the next big lesson I learnt or big mistake I made which is a nice compound mistake which started with ill preparing the top of this bonnet. Water based paints are notoriously fussy and really require a completely clean starting surface. Part one of this mistake was not getting that completely grease free surface by not using enough solvents to wipe down the panel. There's various fish eyes and other blemishes I think caused by that and what I should have done was just start it again but instead I tried to correct them with sandpaper and overcoat. It turned out this was just a waste of paint and time. Some of those blemishes were still there after the second coat had dried and trying to fix them with the random orbit sander actually just led to the paint kind of peeling off completely. Uh, this is with I think 700 grit paper and it's leaving behind the primer slightly roughened up which should be a nice surface to paint on. If we say part two of this mistake was plowing on and doing that extra coat, part three of the mistake was that I didn't actually do a proper first coat. The first coat is supposed to be a 0.5 of a coat. I expect and hope some of you are going to tell me the various wrongs or rights of that but as I understand it this is a very thin coat that's kind of sprayed from a bit further away than a normal one, a sort of dusting that just provides the water-based paint with a good foundation for the next coat that goes on a lot more thickly. As you saw before doing that I had to put on some more primer paint because in some places when I was sanding I went down to bare metal. I know I can basically hear lots of you slapping your own foreheads here and rolling your eyes. It's quite time consuming because each time you do that you have to wait for that to dry. Looking at the video I think I probably overdid it slightly on the bottom right corner of that bonnet for the 0.5 coat but apart from that I'd call that first half coat done. Because it's a half coat that flashes a little bit quicker than normal it's taking about 40 minutes here and that's at 22 degrees C in the workshop. Now we're on to putting the first full coat on and you can see how much closer I'm doing that and how much more full bodied a coat it is. I think the flash off time is a really big consideration with water based paints. 
whereas the solvent evaporates really quickly even in quite cold conditions. But for water-based, I think it's probably important to have the ambient temperature at least about 20 degrees C or you're going to be waiting really long time between coats. The difficulty in making a spray booth in air quotes is that in the UK at least it's hard to get the airflow required and control the temperature at the same time. In my case I've got air rushing in through that bed sheet which means it's slightly filtered but not heated in any way. With the supplementary fan heaters you've seen I'm just about pulling this off. This last of the 2.5 recommended coats of base colour paint is going on much better now after those earlier mistakes. Here's a top tip for you I haven't seen anywhere else. You can use one of these cheap laser thermometers and it really clearly indicates which patches are dry and which are still wet. So before you tack cloth you can have some certainty about that. There's a fairly distinct 2 degrees C difference between drying areas and bits that are fully dry. Now we are mixing up the 2K clear coat and I've just got marked on a jar the correct proportions. I'm putting about 5% thinners into it just to make it go through the gun and atomize really nicely. This is the last tack clothing I'll be giving these panels. You don't tack cloth between clear coats. More on that later. As this is the first clear coating I'll be doing, I spend a little while dialing the gun settings in on that little scrap. It's a good time to talk about safety. Now we've moved on from the water base to the truly brutal 2K clear coat chemicals. The activator or hardener in them contains isocyanates, which you don't want to be snorting up or getting on your skin in any way, and they can travel through latex. So a tip here is to wear nitrite gloves rather than latex ones. You can see the mist from this goes absolutely everywhere and having any kind of exposed skin is a terrible idea, as is having your ears or eyes exposed. Rather than going on about it too much here, I'm going to leave the details of the respirator face shield that I use down in the description below. It's been a game changer for me for loads of workshop tasks, especially chainsaw milling. Judging when the first clear coat is ready to be overcoated, something of an art form, the rule of thumb that's been working for me is to test it with your gloved thumb and see whether it's sticky. It's ready to overcoat when it feels a bit like the back of a postage stamp before you lick it. It shouldn't be wet and slippy but neither should it be completely dry. For me in these conditions it was taking about 10 to 15 minutes between coats. It's worth noting if you leave it dry too long the next coat won't adhere properly. Another advantage of the water based paint is that you can use just plain water to clean the gun and your tools. In this case after the clear coating we quickly want to get the solvents in there, get everything clean and dried out ready for the next time. Incidentally I'm using an ANI spray gun with a 1.3mm tip. I don't have loads of experience with spray guns, I think this one's a sort of mid-level kind of gun but it's worked for me just straight out of the gate really well. I'm looking forward to seeing how it does on some of my other projects, uh, especially with woodworking finishes. So friend, that worked quite well, let's see what happens when we actually get the van in. Trying to really highlight these little cracks here that are some kind of old filler. Obviously, I've got that drip to sand down anyway. 
And there's some more of those cracks around this side too. Down on this wing area here. At some points the spray mist got really quite thick. To help filter this somewhat I turned the dust extractor on and you can see here how much it's filtering out. It's just got a Heather filter bag from a hoover over the exit just to make sure it's not blasting it through. So it's the day after, it looks pretty good, there's definitely some bits of insects in it. It's got a bit of orange peel in us, it's kind of like how factory paint is normally, uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. When you compare the bonnet, which was unprepped, unsanded, didn't do much tack clothing or anything like that, but it's also a flat surface, so presumably more dust and stuff would settle on that. That's a lot worse in terms of the gubbins on it than the rest of it. Okay, it's time to get this masking tape off and see what we've got under here. This should be a cool moment. I'm a little bit worried because I probably should have done the demasking before the clear coat had a chance to completely set, but we'll see how it goes. The masking tape seems to come away okay. The only downside is the shiny new paintwork casts the shoddy handles and plastics in quite sharp relief. But that's okay, I'm not really one to be preening over the looks of the van. This is much more of a work vehicle, so as long as it looks respectable, kind of close up, and keeps the rust away, I'm happy. And off it goes, I don't know how I manage that, but it's okay. If you're interested in the cost of spraying your own vehicle versus just putting it into a paint shop, I'll try and leave a list of expenses in the description below. It might be possible to save money doing this, but not if you factor in your own time. Personally, I really love exploring new skills and was keen to get set up for spray painting other projects, so I'm really pleased I went ahead and did this. Well friend, there it is. Back to being nice and dirty as it always is. Hopefully some of that was useful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.